So a very warm welcome to all of you to this uh, to another lecture in this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture, we had looked at what happens when we pass a signal through an AWG channel, AWG and channel, and there is a random gain involved. And we had seen that the probability of error in that case can be expressed in this form. Now we will look at another aspect, we will still look at the signal being passed through a channel, but now we will see what happens when the channel introduces a random phase. So, if the channel simply introduces a random phase and we know that phase, then all we have to do is change the minimum distance criterion to the phase is known. It means that the received signal is shifted by a deterministic shift in the constellation and uh, it does not change anything. So, let me consider this example or let us take that example. Let us say that I add an unknown phase. So, here I had introduced a random gain. So, now let that random gain become a random phase. So, So, this introduces a random phase and this and when I run this, still run. And get this. So, this is the symbol error rate with the random phase. So, now in order to compare this performance against uh, no change or in order to compare this performance against a constant phase, let us do that and let us compare this performance against a constant phase. Oh, sorry. This, this when we have a constant phase we observe that since the energy remains constant, the performance in two cases is more or less identical, which makes sense because the amplitude due to this arbitrary phase shift remains unchanged. Now, let us say that uh, we do not know this phase, then what happens? Say, I introduce the phase shift, but I do not know this arbitrary phase shift. So, this I will superpose this over the other two and let us see what happens. It is an arbitrary phase shift that we do not know and uh, we see that when there is an arbitrary phase shift that we do not know, we get a straight line that is fixed at a probability of error half. So, this is half more or less half 0 0.50025005000 because half is uh, so in case of BPSK the probability of half the probability of error half. So, let me describe that here. So, when 
talking about PPSK symbol error probability of half implies that the received symbol is independent i am just giving the implication i am leaving the argument to you uh, this is a simple simple enough argument you can is in, the received symbol is independent of you can do this by deriving the conditional probabilities of the transmitted symbol and hence the communication is useless we may as well toss a coin at the we may as well toss a coin at the receiver fine and that said let us go back so we have done this but now let us say that i so the range of this error is between minus pi and pi so let's say that i make this between minus 0.01 pi to 0.01 pi or i make actually i'll put it this way let us analyze this for different spreads of phase error start with pi 2 we start with minus 0.01 pi to 0.01 pi so this and i will minus Zero five and is this minus half because that will make it uh, that will normalize this multiplied by so this will generate let's see what does this generate. this and if i look at hist plot the histogram of the angle of g that should have been a different plot so i'll close this plot the histogram of angle of g this is between Minus zero point zero one pi and plus zero point zero one pi, as we expected. So, this is between minus zero point zero one pi and plus zero point zero one pi. If I make this one, then this is between minus pi and pi, as expected. So now, let us repeat this experiment. So, first make this zero. to get the no error case
so this is there and then let's get this for one for the full error case or for the worst case which gives us a uniform probability of error of half this is there now let us start doing our experiments and let us run this So, when the phase error is very small, 0 0.01, it is almost identical with the no error plot. I will make it double and see what happens. We will go in steps of 2. Still almost identical, 5, still almost no change. one at 0 0.1 it was worse but just slightly worse 0 0.2 it is uh, visibly worse so till 0 0.1 or till a as long as the phase error is between point pi 0 0.1 pi and uh, minus 0 0.1 pi and 1 pi uniformly distributed between these the there is no significant change in the performance of the constellation we'll see why and 0.5 if i make this 0.5 then this won't go totally crazy, but this will still be a lot worse than the earlier case. Yes, see, this is a lot worse than the previous case. So I'll just copy this image, place the legend. I'll just manually mark the legend. So error up to minus 0 0.01 pi to this, this is 0 0.02 pi, 0 0.5, oh sorry, this is 0 0.1 pi, 0 0.2 pi, 0 0.5 pi and so on. Fine, so this is BPSK. Before we go on to explain the reason for this, let us repeat this for QPSK and see, let us repeat the same experiment for QPSK and see what happens over there. Actually, let me stop this, let me terminate this experiment here. Let's start with 0 again. 0, no error, I will get a QPSK constellation of some form. This is for QPSK, this is fine, this is uh, what we experienced earlier. Now let us do this for again uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 1. So. 0 0.5 and 1. 
75% for QPSK 75% is the worst case scenario. So we get that and copy, copy this to PowerPoint, save this here and put this over the, on this slide. So I'll just annotate it again. This is L0.05, this is 0.1 pi, this is 0.2 pi, 0.5 pi and pi, this is pi. So these are the probabilities of error for these phase errors or for these artificially introduced phase errors. Now let us see what happens. For that we will go to another, go to our other example and look at the QPSK case. Let us keep noise at a bare minimum and this and again let us start from the worst case to see what happens. So G and so I run this here. The noise is very small, so I'll keep make the noise even smaller to get you to give you an idea of what is happening. So another zero here, and let's make this zero at first. So when there is no noise in case of QPSK. So this is the case when there is uh, little to no noise because it is at 40 dB signal to noise ratio. So the four points that we are supposed to receive are more or less concentrated, very concentrated for that matter. Now let us say that, uh, so that said let us close this and let us run this once again. We know our clouds. so. We know the low to the high cloud 1, so we see that we get a circle. still get a oh, so it is opening a new figure I do not want a new figure I want hold on I need to close this 1 run and again okay. get this You can run this and I get this. So this is slightly disturbing but we will see. Point 2. Get this. Get 
this and this this is the so this is for qpsk i'll repeat this for bpsk we'll get something el something else interesting over there so let's repeat this for experiment for bpsk then we'll interpret the results again we start at 1 and we get 0 0.5 then we get 0 0.2 then we go for 0 0.1 then we go for 0 0.05 and so this is it and Let me so this is this is BPSK and the one circle is completely covered but uh, it's like this and this represents the yellow ring represents 0 0.5 pi the green ring represents obviously this the colors similar colors represent this so what we see here is that phase ambiguity rotates the constellation symbol by an amount within a given range rotates the constellation symbol by an arbitrary amount within the given range and the received symbol is actually displaced due to multiplication with an arbitrary phase this is all of this is in addition to the additive white Gaussian noise that is uh, still being thrown into the mix. So we now have the, multi the additive noise that is displacing the symbol by addition and we have this multiplicative noise that is uh, displacing the symbol anywhere in the space. So we have uh, two forms of uh, trouble at our hands. So now this actually we see that the larger the phase ambiguity larger the larger the phase ambiguity the larger is the larger is the probability of error and uh, hence we get uh, with increasing phase ambiguity we get increasing probabilities of error so now the question is that 
for high phase ambiguity this is irrespective of uh, the signal to noise ratio at which we transmit or uh, a phase ambiguity at uh, higher frequency at higher signal to noise ratios will also result in a similar kind of a probability of error. So, transmitting at a higher signal to noise ratio might be the solution for additive white Gaussian noise, but uh, it is not uh, the solution for phase ambiguity. Obviously, one way to solve this problem is to estimate the receiver, estimate the phase at the receiver, but how to do that, that is a question, to do that is a question. So, and that, so we answer this question, this question in our final module on wireless or final module on actually uh, this course earlier as anticipated so you might know that this course had 12 modules to begin with but uh, it seems now that uh, by the time you will be watching this uh, lecture, this would be placed in the 11th or the 12th module from what I understand. So, uh, the current lecture would be in the 11th or the 12th module from what I understand. So, uh, I do not think uh, or 11th or the 12th week, not the 11th or the 12th module. So, the current lecture would be placed in the 11th or the 12th week of this course. So, actually we are uh, the plan for this course was uh, to co cover much more syllabus than uh, it actually did. So, possibly we will have to run a second part of this course talking about, uh, so there will be, a, there might be a second part of this course, I do not know as of now. So, so we answer this question in the second part of this course focusing on wireless communications, MIMO and other 4G and 5G because originally this lecture was planned somewhere around the 5th week or the 6th week of this course. But uh, since this is in the 12th week of this course, we will have to develop a second part of this course to answer these questions. So anyway, uh, estimation of phase is a question that uh, we will re let remain unanswered for now. But uh, there still is, uh, there still are a couple of ways. So there still are a couple of ways using which we can recover the signal without knowing its phase. One of these is, so one, I will just list these, one is index modulation, index modulation or uh, uh, also known as orthogonal signaling. We have done orthogonal signaling, but uh, we have not uh, seen orthogonal signaling as index modulation till now or for our application index modulation will be like orthogonal signaling. 
and the other is dpsk differential phase shift so we will look at the index modulation part of uh, orthogonal signaling right now so we see that or for this context actually coherent detection is covered so we can see that the signal space consists of multiple axes signal space consists of multiple orthogonal axes we transmit along one of these so each symbol that we transmit is along one of these each symbol that we transmit is along one of these axes so we can say that only one of these orthogonal dimensions is active so we can say that we basically can say that if we are transmitting sign the signal we can write y equals j phi for generality or j theta s plus w and s can be seen as a column of the identity matrix so y vector can be seen as y n or m we could do this for any number of dimensions we have considered the two dimensional and three dimensional signals earlier we can do this for m dimensions and y m equals 0 0 0 0 say i was active j theta Yes, zero plus this this beast. So we get uh, this. So now we naturally we can say that. Y one to Y i Y m W one W two J theta E s supposing that the ith index is active plus W i W m fine we see this so now naturally we see that uh, the active index the ith index is the sum of two terms and uh, all the other term or all the other entries will contain just the noise term or we can say that i'll add a few more slides here taking the 
average power of the dimensions we see that e1 equals n not e2 equals n not e i equals e s plus n not e m equals n not so in general it is expected that the power or the mean squared value of the active dimension will be the highest that might not be the case because there is noise and noise is always random but uh, we expect that uh, the active dimension will have the highest amount of energy or highest uh, absolute norm square so active dimension has the highest that has the highest absolute value and if at the detector we set the active dimension as the chain with the highest absolute value we can get somewhere obviously the probability of error in this case will be so probability of error in this case will be the probability that some other dimension has uh, an energy higher than the true active some other dimension has an energy higher than the true active dimension that is the probability of error so that is uh, where we start so we let us evaluate this and for the three dimensional case let us evaluate this idea for the three dimensional case first as a point of reference i'll save this as non coherent three dimensional case is there three dimensional non coherent is saved so we have this and so i'll decrease one zero that will make the simulation faster maybe rougher but faster yeah, so see this is faster anyway i need to eliminate this run again see this is the symbol error probability as uh, expressed by us earlier so this is there now let us first compare this method so this is using the minimum distance criterion so as a first let us compare the maximum energy criterion against the minimum distance criterion to see where that uh, criterion stands that is slightly worse perform slightly or marginally worse than the minimum distance criterion but let us look at it so length y and let's say max this and this and so this is the this is simply the maximum energy criterion so to show you that why 
hundred is oh y let me use the proper notation yes max abs y this in getting this right is very important y save this So let's first look at this. So this is yc1. Let us look at the absolute values. This and let us look. So naturally, you can see that the active dimension has the maximum energy, which is there, and max. I do this so the index is 1 which is natural and uh, we see that c1 sc1 I look at it the signal was 100 zero, zero, so natural this is because the noise level is very low so this will satisfy or this code will run without errors and now if I run it This shouldn't be there and run. So, this performs slightly worse than the minimum distance criterion as we elaborated earlier, but now let us introduce a random phase shift. So, as we did earlier, so let us introduce this random phase shift here and So this random phase shift goes here and the random phase shift goes here and I run this and it perfectly overlaps with the previous case. So you can see that an introduction of phase error does not help, does not affect the performance of uh, index modulation or orthogonal mod modulation when you are detecting the maximum energy. So, or when you are detecting the dimension with the maximum energy. So that is the one of the non-coherent detection techniques that uh, we will discuss. The other non-coherent non-coherent detection technique that we will discuss in the next lecture is DPSK or differential phase shift kink, the details of which will be discussed in the next class. So that is all for now. Thank you.